have true breakthrough only through you and what you offer us, Jesus. And we come and we sit here in your name tonight. See that in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So glad to have all of you here with us tonight. Um, if I haven't had the pleasure of meeting you, my name is Rachel Wilford, and I am on staff here uh, with our Life Together groups and our women's ministry. And I just want to say thanks for being here. It is always a joy to come in on Saturday night and have an opportunity to praise Jesus. I love that tonight we are having an opportunity to talk about anxiety and fear that drives up. And for any of you who are, are witnessing or experiencing that in your life, tonight is going to be a night to remember as we talk through how to go through that. But a couple of things we have coming up here at K2 before we get into our amazing message. For many of you, you were here last week and you heard what a passion it is for so many to care for our community that, that brings in foster kids. Whether you're currently doing that or investigating what that could look like in your home, many of you are in a position where you're not able to do that and want to still participate in some way. We would love to welcome you to come and be part of that through our foster care program, which is actually having an information meeting tonight, right after service. We're going to be right over here in this room. There's some signs in room 15. We would love to have you come and join us. Just get some more information, what it could look like to surround our families that are in our community, bringing in these kids who so badly need love, need support, and need help as they're going through difficult times in their life. So make sure you come be part of that. And then women, we know that our joining together right now is what's keeping us going. Talk about anxiety and fear, all the things that we're carrying with us, right? So on December 3rd, we are having a super fun chili and soup cook-off. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, guys. Not invited for this one. You're going to miss out. So ladies, bring your best. Put it to the test. You're like, I I'm supposed to get a laugh. Uh-huh, thanks, thanks. I got a laugh during run-through, nothing from you guys. Thanks, drop it. All right, but seriously, December 3rd, 6 to 8 p.m., we're going to be meeting here. Bring your family recipes. I don't care if you bring a Costco. Bring something, share it with us. We're going to have an amazing way to spend some time in fun, community, and a bit of competition. The best way to sign up for that so that we can make our arrangements is message to the 94090. So you're going to text to 94090 K2 women. That just gets us some information so we can get you the information for the night, but get it on your calendar. It's not going, you're not going to want to miss it. Now, like I mentioned at the beginning, tonight we're going to be heading into our last message of this series when we're going to be talking about anxiety and fear. And I know in my home, in my life, in my family, in my friends, these are a reality. This is something that we're facing and we're trying to walk through. And we truly know here in this room, the best way to battle that is in God's presence. And we're going to spend time in God's presence tonight. And I'm so glad that you're here with us tonight to do that. We're going to have an amazing night of worship as we spend time releasing this anxiety and this fear. So we're breathing this out. We're going to spend some time as Dave's walking us through ways that we can release that. And I'm so excited that you're all here. Jesus, we know that you truly do provide breakthrough for us. That we have an opportunity to come and sit in your throne room to release all that you are the way to peace for us. And that there are ways that you provide on this earth for us to walk through this. And so, Jesus, thank you for an opportunity that we can gather in your name tonight. We can worship you, spend some time away from the world, and receive all that you have for us tonight. God, we glorify you with our time. We give this to you in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. my soul and know that he alone is god be still my soul be still and know he is our help in times of trouble in times of
Well, y'all, I'm super excited to share this message with you guys tonight because I, I know you need it. I know you need it. Because I know I need it. I needed it all week long. Anxiety. What is it? It's your mind and your body's reaction to stressful, dangerous, or unfamiliar situations. And that's why we're doing this series called Winning the War in Your Mind. If you haven't been with us, this is the fifth week in this series. It comes from a book by Craig Rochelle called Winning the War in Your Mind. I cannot encourage you enough to get it. It was super helpful for me. It really, God used it to help transform my life this year. I really encourage you. And this is a great topic to end on because it's so common amongst humanity. Now, a certain amount of anxiety is pretty normal, right? But it can be paralyzing. It can really inhibit our lives. And then I also want to go one step further because there's anxiety, but then there is anxiety disorder. And that is when, when, when anxiety disorder is happening, it means it's happening without triggers. Like there are things that all of us have that happen and all of a sudden we get anxious about things. But you can actually move to the point where you can start having anxiety and then nothing actually triggered it. It literally is becoming a part of your life and it is paralyzing you. And we know that some of you probably in this room are experiencing that. In fact, anxiety disorder 
is the number one common type of mental illness in the United States. 40 million adults struggle with this. This is really real. Now, I just want to say, um, when you get to the point where you might have anxiety disorder, or if some of you even tonight are just super anxious, or some of you watching online, we can get to the point, if you were here two weeks ago, we had some therapists up here um, who were helping us to understand when do we need get to the point where we need a little bit more of extra help, when the distress is paralyzing and keeping us from living the life that God has for us. And Ed Peterson, one of our counselors who was up here, just shared personally that sometimes you get to the point where you can't even cry out to God, because we're going to talk about that. <laughs> you should do that. Sometimes you don't have the spiritual energy even to pray, and definitely not to reach out. And so I, I just want to say again, if you weren't here, watch that. It was two weeks ago. But I just want to say, if you're in that, in, in that state, then there are many different things that we talked about on that evening that are important to take care of our physical body through, through health and eating and exercise, but also that medication may be the thing that's needed to help your body get into the place where what I'm going to share with you tonight can actually even be helpful. And I just want to encourage you, like, because I think sometimes we talk about this and you're going to hear the scripture I'm going to teach from and you just go, man, it sounds so simple. Why can't I do that? And then you just heap more shame on yourself because you can't stop being anxious. <laughs> well, we're not going to go there, okay? We're not going there. But here's what I know. It's not, it's not a quick fix for any of us. Not a quick fix for me. I don't think it is for anybody. All right? So can I just pray for us? Because can I, can I just tell you why we're here? I don't know why you're here. I know why I'm here. <laughs> In 1 John 1, it says that we actually fellowship with God. And that word fellowship means we actually share in the very life of God. And that means God tonight, every one of you, God is wanting to come and share his life with you. That's why we're here. And we're going to give him ours, our life, and we're going to receive his life. That's called eternal life is when you experience God. And I'm telling you, he's here, okay? So let's not just go to church and then leave and have nothing happen, amen? amen. Let's meet with the living God. Let's open our hearts to his living word and let's receive the power of his spirit to change us tonight. God, I claim your presence because you said I inhabit your praise. It was so good to praise you. We know that when we gather in your name, you are here with us. And we know that you love every one of us in this room. And your word tonight is so clear. You don't desire anyone to live in fear. You want to rid us of our anxiety. You came to bring us peace. And that's all. I'm just asking right now that you would anoint your word with power, that your spirit would speak intimately to each person here. And that you would help us, God, to know the steps we can take to be free. And I pray for it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, just a little bit of brain science, by the way. We've been celebrating the fact that God created science, right? We know that. We don't have to be afraid of science. It's kind of fun as science continues to find out cool things. Part of the problem with anxiety is this little thing. It's, called, it's like a little almond in the base of your brain called your amygdala. Anybody know about the amygdala? Okay, two of you. Okay, so if I get it wrong, you can tell me after the service, okay? But basically, the amygdala is like your brain's watchman, looking out for danger and looking out for threats. It's responsible for the emotions that you feel. It's kind of that survival instinct. It's your fight or flight, <laughs> sending strong doses of adrenaline, preparing your body for action. And it's a gift from God. <laughs> It's a great gift from God. Like when Susie and I were celebrating our anniversary up in the mountains, having this beautiful lunch with smoked salmon and grapes and wine, and all of a sudden we hear this little noise down in the brush, and we're looking up like this, and all of a sudden Susie goes, it's a bear! Oh Amygdala goes, run! And we did. We grabbed everything of essence, and we took off. That's what the amygdala does, and it's a gift from God. It's intense, but you guys... If it's intense, if you have intense and repeated, painful, threatening, traumatic experiences, it literally can cause the amygdala to grow larger, and next thing you know, it becomes more hypersensitive. And now it's like a watchman who cries wolf too much. <laughs> 
because it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not objective. It just sees pain. It knows what hurt before. It knows what could cause you pain. It just goes, put up a wall. Run, flee, fight. It's just wired, hardwired to protect us. So it needs some help. And the help that God gave us is what science is calling the prefrontal cortex. And that's the logical part of your brain. And that can take strong emotions and fear or anxiety and actually make sense of it. And this is part of what's going on in the war in your mind. <laughs> is the amygdala freaking out and your prefrontal cortex, the logical side, this think that we've been talking about, going back and forth. Let me give you a, just a, a fun example for me. Uh, I've shared this in the years, but I'm, I'm super fearful of heights. Anybody else? Okay. Um, I, I, don't, I don't dig them. So when I was doing youth ministry, I took a group of high school kids on a wilderness trip into uh, the upper peninsula of Michigan. And at the end of the trip, we did a high ropes course. And so I actually did a number of the things on the high ropes course. I was literally, I was taking like, take pictures of me so I can send them to my family because they would never believe that I'm up here. But then at the very end, the last thing they wanted to do is they wanted us to climb up a, a tree that was like a telephone pole. That's all it was, three stories high, like at least that high. And just climb up the skinny pole. And then there was a little platform, no bigger this, than this right here. And you're supposed to step out on the platform. And then there was a trapeze bar out there that you had to jump off of three stories high and grab the bar. Can I tell you what happened? My amygdala went nuts. And it cried out. And I just remember, it wasn't even a thought. I'm not doing that. Period. And there was another one of my kids who said he wasn't doing it either. And we just sat down and we decided to watch everybody. And then that dang prefrontal cortex started thinking. And I'm sitting next to this kid, and I remember thinking, man, I challenge these youth every week to face their fears and trust God with their life and go for it. <laughs> and here I am modeling this kid, like, I'm just kidding, right? <laughs> like, when it's really scary, don't do it. And I'm going back and forth, and my amygdala would scrum at me, go, no, 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 you idiot, don't even, what are you doing? Don't even think that. And then my prefrontal cortex says, but you can set an example for this kid, and you can help him take steps. And I'm back and forth and back and forth. And finally, in this instance, my prefrontal cortex won. And I went over, and I sat there, and I looked up. But it said to me, what? Come on, look. They actually harness you in. They have someone below blame you. My, it started thinking about what was true. Look at even when people fall, they don't fall. And still my amygdala is going, you're nuts, don't do this. But I did. And I climbed that three-foot pole, stood out on the edge, and leapt out and grabbed the trapeze bar. And I did it. And it was awesome. And I, thank you. <laughs> and, uh, and here's what I'm telling you, man. We called K2 the church an adventure with God. Because there is so much fear. The enemy constantly is causing us to be anxious about things and worrying about things so that we won't take steps with him. And we have a battle if we're going to actually live the life that God has for us. And we're going to walk through today how we can do this. And you guys, let's, but let's talk about some of the real issues that we have here. Like if we were going to play Family Feud tonight, right? What's the number one answer for reasons we feel anxious? Ding, ding, ding. Finances. We love to freak out and worry about our finances or job security. Number two, maybe number one, my kids. Any of us who have kids. You start freaking out and you worry about them. Some of you, your worry today is your marriage. Is it going to make it? Our health. When you get the news and something's wrong, you're feeling pains and you don't know what they are. And we worry. Acceptance with friends. Failing on things. That's one of mine, you guys, still my whole life has been this, this fear of rejection through things that happened early on in my life that developed a hypersensitivity in my amygdala that makes me automatically think that people don't like me. I get into situations, and if there's conflict, it's like, run, put up a wall, be nice, and act like everything's okay. Do whatever you got to do. Don't get hurt. Anybody relate to that? And my prefrontal cortex is going, how about a healthy relationship? And it's a battle, and we all have them. So 
These things kick in our anxiety because we are fixating on the presence of the problem and we lose focus on the presence of God. Everything we just worshiped about. So I'm going to give you today four steps. I will usually do four quick and easy steps to not be anxious. Um, but I'm going to teach you a scripture that you, if you've been in the Bible at all for very long, you know this. But it is such, it is, there are four clear steps on the path to peace that God gives us right through his word. Okay? Let's read through it and then I'll unpack it. Philippians 4, 4 through 9. Rejoice in the Lord always, and I will say it again. So it must be really important. <laughs> Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all, for the Lord is near. Don't be anxious about anything, seriously, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. The peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever's true, whatever's noble, whatever's right, whatever's pure, whatever's lovely, whatever's admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. So here's our four steps. We praise God, we pray to God, we ponder the truth, and we put it into practice, all right? So let's talk about the first one. Praise him. Number one, first step is you praise him. Let's look at the verse again, verse four. Rejoice in the Lord. How often? Always. I will say it again. So like I said earlier, this must be critical. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all because the Lord is near. And here's what's true, you guys. Is God ever far from you? Is he ever far from you? No. And yet, do you feel all alone? Isn't that crazy? So praise actually engages us with God's presence because he is near. He is near. But we got to engage it. I know this last year he's been trying to tell me, it's like, David, I'm as close as the air as you breathe. And you breathe all the time to keep yourself alive. But spiritually, I'm that close. But when the problem arises, you go, <gasps> And he's like, I'm right here. And praise helps us when we're anxious and God is near. And here's what's interesting, you guys. When he says, rejoice in the Lord. Whenever Paul is using the Lord, he's talking about Jesus. He's saying, rejoice in Jesus, you guys. And I say again, rejoice in Jesus. Why Jesus? Because it's what Jesus Christ did on the cross for us that forgave us of all of our sin, took all of it away, so there's no shame, there's nothing to ever fear with God, and then he reckons, by forgiving us of our sin, he literally reconciled us to God. And then God says he makes us his child by putting his spirit within us. So Paul's like, man, you guys rejoice in Jesus! <laughs> Because he's done everything necessary so you can know the Lord is near. He's present inside of you. So I just want, like Psalm 42, I just want to give you an example of how this works in the Bible. David was a, good di a, a great example of how to wrestle with the amygdala and the prefrontal cortex, all right? Look at this, Psalm 42. As the deer pants for streams of water, my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God and for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? <laughs> now David's like, when can I go meet with God? Because where did he meet with God? In the temple, right? He had to go to the temple. You guys, when it says, when, when can I go meet with God? Hey, when can you go meet with God? In all every situation, <laughs> always, all the time. You can actually engage with God immediately. And then he says, my tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me all day long, where is your God? And I think it's so interesting that people are going, so you believe in this God? Well, where is he? Isn't it interesting that Paul said what? Let your gentleness be evident to who? To everyone. They're all 
David's like, he's in the psalm, he's going, everybody's saying, where's your God? And Paul is saying, let your gentleness be evident to all, and they'll know where your God is, because you're saying what? He is near. And I'm rejoicing in that. Verse 4, these things I remember as I pour out my soul. How I walked among the crowds of worshipers leading a great procession to the house of God with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. And here he goes. Why, my soul, are you so downcast? Why are you so disturbed within me? There's his amygdala. But you notice what he's doing? His amygdala, right, it's disturbed, it's downcast. But then he's talking to it. He's thinking, and he says, put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. That's what you can do. That's the gift that God gave us. And David was exercising it right here before they knew anything about brain science. He was exercising his prefrontal cortex, the ability to think and to tell the emotions, it's okay. And then the last verse, my soul is downcast within me. You don't deny that. You don't deny the fear. You don't deny the anxiety. It's real. It's down in there. But then he says, therefore, because I'm anxious, because I'm fearful, I will remember you. I will remember you. You guys, I, I cannot tell you. I am wrestling this one down every day. Because like I'm saying, this is not a quick fix. This is a daily practice. This is something you just got to learn to do. And so can I just give you a couple things I'm doing that, I, that are helping me right now? It's a new, one of my new practices is the first thing I do before I sit down and have my time of prayer or reading the scripture is I'm just, I am praising God. I'm putting on my earphones and I'm just putting in worship music and I'm rejoicing in the Lord. I'm praising him. It's the very first thing I'm trying to do. And then what was cool is then I went to study for this passage, and I think, oh, that's what he tells us. That's the first step he tells us to do. <laughs> we need to rejoice in him. We need to remember who he is. So, I mean, I mean go to Spotify. You, there's so many playlists on Spotify or Pandora. Make your own. Here, go to, pa just, just search Passion, search Hillsong, search Elevation, whatever. There are so many worship sets. And, and I, I kind of have fun with it because I just put it on shuffle, and I go, okay, Holy Spirit, be my worship leader. Right? I'm just going to see. And I want to tell you how many times the song will come on, and I'm like, oh, that's just what I needed. So exercising this. And then, I've, I've been saying this a lot lately. I'm going to say it again. <laughs> because I do it every day. There are four things I praise him for. Okay? And they're just, they're just up here. I praise God for his love. Come on, man. Why are we freaking out about things? It's because we're doubting that he loves us. Let's just be honest. I'm not sure that you do. And we have to tell ourselves what scripture says about God's love. That I am a dearly loved child. He is love. He can't do anything but love me. So when I wake up in the morning, and I do, I wake up in the middle of the night with anxious thoughts. It's so frustrating. And I'll wake up in the morning and I have to tell myself again, God can't do anything but love me. And I meditate on that and I say it. I'm exercising my mind. I'm thinking about it. The second thing I praise him for is that he's good. This is such a, he's good, you guys. And then I always throw, and he's always working for the good. He can't do anything bad. Everything God is doing and he's always working is good. And then I praise him because he's right. And I find this one, his righteousness this is where I have to go. You guys know that, that the other worship song we do a lot? You're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are. <laughs> and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. You know, that's just good exercise right there. And then it says, and you're perfect in all of your ways. When everything around you doesn't look perfect, he is right in all. Everything he does. He cannot do anything wrong. He can't. That's why he's the one that we can trust. And then the last thing I praise him for is then he is almighty. 
There is, he has all power and nobody can match against him. Nobody. You guys, I can't tell you how many mornings I go from anxiety to peace just by those four things right there. And I, as your pastor, have to do that every day. Okay? This is a practice. This is an exercise. This is spiritual discipline. It's not a quick fix. All right? So, there we go. The first one. And apparently the first one. Rejoice in the Lord. I say it again. Rejoice. Praise him. Then he goes. Now once you've done that, now pray to him. Pray to God. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Classic little phrase, if it's big enough to worry about, it's big enough to pray about. I just think, are we funny? We're like, oh, God, God's got so many big things on his plate. Isn't that hilarious? We, isn't that funny that we actually think that? Come on, man, he's God. If you're worried about it, he cares about it. Period. And to God, this, right? You present your request to God, and that's why the rejoicing part was so important, because now you know who you're presenting them to. Oh, my gosh. I'm presenting my request and my anxiety to my loving, good, righteous, almighty God who's with me. And so we give our burdens to God, and then he says, you give them to me, and I will give you my peace. Oh, my goodness. That's amazing. It doesn't say we muster up peace. He gives us his peace. 1 Peter 5, 6, and 7, great verse says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. You know, part of this humble, part of the humility in this God, you guys, is just being willing to say, God, I need you. I am anxious. I am fearful. God's like, thanks for, thanks for being honest. He goes, I actually made you to need me. So when we humble ourselves instead of like mustering up and, well, I'm a good Christian, I'm gonna, I can do it. It's like, no, man, just fall on your face and get on your knees. And he goes, if you humble yourself before my, my mighty right hand, because I'm almighty, I'll lift you up. And then this great verse, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. What are you anxious about? Is it your future? Is it your finances? Is it a relationship? Is it your health? Are you even anxious about your walk with God because you can't quite be what you think he wants you to be? What is it? I, I was almost going to bring a fishing pole up here and just go, whoosh, and just cast it, because that's what it is. He's like, get rid of it and give it to God. But instead, I'm going to use the illustration that Craig Rochelle uses in his book. And I'm going to be totally honest with you. When I read it the first time, and then when I watched his message on this, I thought, God, that's really corny. So I'm going to share with you a corny illustration that actually I think is really awesome. And really, it's a visual way for you to cast your cares on him. It's a visual way for you to make your requests known to God. So do you guys see all these coming out when you walked in today? Okay, every one of you needs to take one of these on your way out. All right? This is your God box. See, doesn't this already sound corny? <laughs> this is so corny. This is your God box. But here's what you need to do. And Susie and I, we did, I went ahead and start, we started last week. So I could say, I've, 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 I've practiced this a little bit. Anything that you, because what, what did the scripture say? <laughs> In every situation, if there's anything you're anxious about, you just grab a piece of paper and you write it down on the piece of paper, you open it up, and then you literally say, God, I'm giving this to you. And I want to tell you, <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> now, it could be, at least, I, I, but I really want to do it, right? Like, I don't want to just go, man, God, I'm really anxious about this, and throw it in there, and I, I don't, I'm not really giving it to him. I just kind of threw it in the box. So, man, I, I've had to, I had to today. <laughs> I put another one in the box today. I'm like, man, Lord, you really want me to experience this when I'm teaching it, don't you? And I had to write it down, and then I had to really say, but God, I need to give this to you. And here's what's crazy. I was actually trying to make myself all at peace before I put it in the box. 
to show God how much faith I had in him. Don't do that, okay? He said, no, you give it to me, and then I will give you peace. It's a gift of grace. So sometimes you just have to confess and say, God, I am so anxious about this. I am so worried about this. But I am, by faith, choosing to believe that you're good, that you love me, that you're right and all-powerful, and I am giving this to you. And I want to tell you, man, it was cool, wasn't it, babe? She put some extra stuff in the box, too. Um, but we've been doing it. And here's what's the cool thing, is then when you do it, this verse says, and do this with thanksgiving. And I think that's important, because when you give thanks, you actually trust him, and you go, God, thank you. By faith, I'm thanking you for taking this. I don't want to control it anymore. I'm trusting you to do it. And then you close the box, and you just go on your life, and you trust him with it. But if along the way you decide you really actually do want to worry about this thing, <laughs> and you're sitting there and you're chewing on it, and you don't want to give it to him, then here's what you got to do. You actually have to go back, and you open up the box, and you take it out, and you say, God, I don't trust you with this, and I'm going to take it back from you. Now that would be hard. But you guys, when we worry, that's exactly what we're doing. We're saying, God, I really don't trust you. And so I'm going to take it, <laughs> and I'm going to carry it, and I'm going to worry. It makes me feel horrible, but I'm going to do that. And so, and I, so far we haven't had to take anything out of the box yet, but, but I, I, just, I think this is a fantastic exercise, you guys. I want to encourage every one of you, grab one of these things, find the time, go home, and anything, every situation, all things, write them down and give them to God and stick them in that box. And by the grace of God, let's not take them back out and say, God, I don't trust you with this. And let's walk with him. Man, you guys, I have people in that box at home. I've got relationships, again, because that, that's one of my things that can cause me to, like, to be at peace with people is a big deal. And so I've got some people in my box. All our cars went to kaputs this week. It was unbelievable. I'm like, are you serious? And, and I didn't put it in the box. And as soon as I walked outside, all I'm thinking, I was like, I can't believe it. What are we, how are we going to pay for that? What are we going to do? I'm like, why didn't I put that in the box? <laughs> so I did. I went back and I wrote <laughs> our cars. And God, I don't know what to do about these things. But here we go. And I put them back in the box. And then, man, K2. I, I'm going to be totally honest with you. Uh, you know, w our future, it's like when we talk about the building and where are we going to go and what's going to happen, I, I don't know. This is kind of weird. I literally have zero anxiety about our physical structure, about what, what's going to be next. I just don't. I, God's given us all the money we need <laughs> to take the next step. He's given us a place to meet in the interim. And we can't make that happen, so he's got to do this for us. I'm okay with that. You know what I, but you know what I carry? <laughs> it's you guys. That, it's the people. It's the community. It's us hanging in there and loving each other and holding on by faith and being and persevering and enduring so we can get there where God wants to take us. It's, I, I have to give him you. <laughs> and I have to give him you almost every single day. And I have to give him my job so that I don't think it's my job to make this happen. So anyway, I don't know what yours are, but those are where some of the things that are in my box. All right? Praise God. Rejoice in him. Remind yourself who he is. Then pray to him. And then there's the, the last two, ponder the truth. Jesus says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever's true, whatever's noble, whatever's right, whatever's pure, whatever's lovely, whatever's admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. If you weren't here again through our series, I'm not going to uh, camp on this one because this was basically the first three messages. You have to identify what the lie is. You need to replace it with the truth of God. And then last week, Mike Rutledge knocked it out of the park on helping us to know how to reframe our minds when we're going into something. And here's, I, I love what Craig Rochelle said. He goes, every time you do this, every time you think about what is true and lovely and admirable and right. It's like, he, it's, he, he said, it's like you employ your prefrontal cortex to be a bodyguard outside your mind. 
So you have this big, burly guy, and every thought that comes in, he checks the ID, and he looks at it, and he goes, this isn't true, you can't come in. That was, I love that word. Isn't that a cool picture? Because the scripture tells you to do what? Take captive every thought. Every thought. And we just buy stuff. We just, thoughts come in, and they say screwy things about God, and they tell us things that aren't true about us, and we're like, oh, oh, oh maybe it's true. We need to think about what is true. And so if you're worried about your value, you can stop and go, no, I'm a dearly loved child of God, and in all things, I'm more than a conqueror through Christ who loves me. You can look at your future and be freaking out. You don't know what's going to happen, and and maybe you too feel a pressure about your future, that you have to do it. So you go to Joshua 1, and it says, be strong and have great courage because God goes before you and is with you. Romans 8, 28, and he is working together in all things for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. And Jeremiah 29, and he knows the plans he has for you, plans not to harm you but to prosper you. Or you can be like me and freak out about your finances. And the first verse I grabbed onto is in Deuteronomy 29 where it says, everything in heaven and earth is the Lord's. Ha, <laughs> God, that's your car in the shop. Everything in heaven and earth is the Lord's. We only have what has come from God's hands. All the money I possess is all God's. And I go, man, if you want to pay 1800 bucks on that, it's all right. Seriously. Instead of me like, what am I going to do? It's like, okay, this is God's money. I mean, this is the stuff you guys, we need to do. Think, ponder on what is true, okay? And then the last one is you got to put it into practice. Put it into practice. Verse 9, whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice. And the God of peace will be with you. This is so awesome. You know, sometimes we praise God. We can even come to church. We're going to praise him when I'm done right here in just a few minutes. You can praise him. You can pray to him. You can think about what is true. And then all of a sudden, as you're doing that, you can go, oh, no. Because as you do that, you realize, I need to actually do something. And then anxiety rises even higher. That's what happened to me when I was, Susie and I, we were doing our box. We're putting some stuff in there, especially when it came to the people. I'm putting these people in the box. And then all of a sudden, I hear the Spirit say, okay, now here's the step you need to take to help make that relationship right. My amygdala goes, oh, anxiety rises up. But you know what? I have to put it into practice. I have to take what I've seen, what I've heard, what the scripture tells me. Right? Jesus said this so many times. It's the man who hears my word and puts it into practice. Is the guy whose house stands on the rock when the winds and the waves crash against it. But if you don't put his word into practice, you can go through the same struggles as somebody else and your life crashes. So we have to put it into practice. But here's why you guys think about this. It's because if you do the things of God, you get in step with the Spirit. That's how you stay, you know, Galatians 5 says, keep in step with the Spirit. Well, just do the things of God. Put it into practice, because that's where God is. Jesus said this amazing truth. He says, where I am, my servant also will be. What was he saying? Because <laughs> my servant does whatever I tell him to do, and this, is, and, and this is beautiful, you guys. God will never ask you to do something that he's not already doing. He's never saying, get out there. And then he stands on the sidelines. and No, he's like, hey, I'm over here. And I'm asking you to come join me. Isn't that cool? And we're over here. Why? Because now the enemy does not want you joining God. He doesn't want you in God's will. He doesn't want you leaping out and grabbing trapeze bars and changing the world and healing relationships and being free. So he puts all these fears and all these anxieties and makes you think goofy things about God and about that person you have to work with or whatever. And then we don't move. And then God's right there and we're over here. And we don't. And what did he say? If you do the things you heard from me and you put them into practice, the God of peace will be with you. Why? Because you actually stepped into the God of peace. He's already there. He's always with you. And he's working and he wants to do good things. So when he asks you to do something and just freaks you out, do it. Think. Tell your amygdala you're wrong. 
think about who God is. He's loving and good and righteous and powerful. He would only ask me to do something that's in his kingdom that's going to be for the benefit of what is right and good. And you can stuff down the negative emotions that are crippling you and paralyzing you, and you can step into God and the peace of God will guard your heart and mind, and the God of peace will be with you. And you, if you're anything like me, we got to fight that every single day. I, maybe that's why Jesus said, take up your cross daily and follow me. Okay? So Mike, come on up. Band, come on up. So what we're going to do is we're going to do it. All right? We're going to do the first thing that the scripture tells us to do. Rejoice in the Lord. Let me say it again. Rejoice. He is near. You guys, he's in this room. And the beautiful thing about worship is it also gives you a chance to think about these things. You sing them, and they, and they exercise your mind, but they also exercise your heart. And so as we stand and we worship him and we praise him, just do this. Do this with faith. And if you need to, don't even sing and just say, God, help me believe this. Holy Spirit, come and minister to my heart right now. Help me be in union with you. Give me the strength I need. Give me the power I need. I want to walk out of here knowing I engaged with the God of peace. He loves you. He loves you. He is so good. He so wants to show you how good he is. He's only doing what is right. He really is. He can't do anything wrong. You guys don't buy that lie. And nobody can stop him. Nobody can stop him from doing what he wants to do with your life. Okay? So let's stand and let's worship this really, really good God. There's no shadow you light up, mountain you won't climb up, you're coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, you're coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, you're coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, breathless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, right still I'm found, leaves the 99, and I couldn't earn it. I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. And oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God.
Go ahead and have a seat, everybody. Um, it's so interesting. That song, it's your presence and your power. 
I'm, uh, our Life Together group is doing Acts right now, and, and that's just what it's all about. It's like, it's Jesus, it, when great, powerful things happen, they're just saying, hey, it, it had nothing to do with us. They say it was his power and his presence that do it. And so, um, this is Christina O'Neill, everybody. Would you guys give Christina a little warm? Um, she just came out to me while, I was, uh, while we were worshiping the song and just said, man, I think I'm supposed to let everybody know that I've experienced this. <laughs> and so I just sat there and I'm just like, man, I just know Jesus just said, right, it's by the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony that God does it. And so she's really excited about being up here, by the way, too. She, you know, <laughs> so she, she's dying. <laughs> but that's why I know Christina. So, yeah, share what you feel like God's laying on your heart. Yeah, that verse, by the word of our testimony. There's power, there's um, healing, there's, yeah, God's power in our life. So the testimony of that verse, um, rejoice always, pray without ceasing in everything of things. So I have a plaque in my kitchen that 12 years ago I had in my kitchen. And 12 years ago, my son, Josiah, got cancer, um, a rare blood disorder. And we went through chemotherapy, we went through a move, we lived in Hawaii, I moved to Utah, um, selling everything in four days, and being here to be at the hospital, and another year of chemotherapy, um, and an open heart surgery, so we went through so much, right, which should have taken me down <laughs> to nothing, and I was just sharing this testimony with another lady at um, a coffee shop today that I was so carried through that time, and the the only reason why is because I was rejoicing always, praying without season and everything, giving thanks, believing beyond a shadow of doubt that God had a purpose and he had a reason. And it, I can't explain the peace that I had, um, the joy through it all. Um, and then a year, so we move here, and a year later they tell us it's coming back. Like we got to be in the hospital, it's going to be like intense chemotherapy. And I'm like, no. And the Holy Spirit just told me, no, we have to break this. And within a week, we had had everybody in the valley pray that had had healing, that knew healing, that <laughs> believed with us. And Josiah, I want you to stand up. Um, so they tell us, in a week, we do more <laughs> chemotherapy. And he was healed. We went back to the doctor. He said, I didn't expect this conversation to happen. It's going away, and it never came back. <laughs> And it's such a testimony, yeah. So it works, it does work, and I'm not stronger than anybody else. I'm not amazing in any way. It's just that I believed that verse, and I stood with it no matter what, and I didn't give in to doubt, I didn't give in to fear, and I didn't give in to anxiety and what I should have given into, right, with the world. It says we need to embrace or something, and it's like, no, we need to believe God. You know, when I was reading the book, um, uh, Craig Rochelle shared the story of Paul and Silas, right, who were thrown in prison. And while they were in prison, they just started praising God, right? They just started singing songs. They just started doing exactly what, and what he, what he said was, and then God broke them out, right? God does this miracle thing, he breaks them out. But they didn't praise him after he broke them out. He actually praised, they praised him while he was in the prison. So they were praising God for who he was, not necessarily for what he was going to do. And then God did it. It's like, that's, an amazing, that's all I can think of with your testimony there, Christina. You were praising God, rejoicing in him, praying constantly, and thanking him, even in the midst of it. That's amazing. Thank you for sharing that story. Well, y'all, um, here's what's crazy, right? So we have a chance. We just heard God's word tonight. God's word to you. God. It's word to you. And we have a choice tonight. We can agree with it. Will we, will we agree with God and say, God, I, I choose to agree with you that if I present my requests and rejoice in the Lord to thanksgiving to you, that you will guard my heart and mind in Christ. That I don't have to muster up peace. You will give it to me. So let's agree with that. That's what God tells us. And then let's confess. Let's just go ahead and confess to him. Take this, get this box, man. Dude, there better be no boxes left. Grab these boxes be corny with me and Susie, 
and go home and do this, really, and confess to God and put, give him your request, okay? And then take that step of faith, anything he's asking you to do, and see if the God of peace won't be with you, okay? God, I pray in Jesus' name, thanks for being here tonight. Thanks for your presence. Thanks for your living word, which tells us reality. Thank you, Jesus, that your light shines over darkness, overcomes darkness. I pray against the enemy and all of his schemes in this room, because he has a scheme for all of us, God, to keep us from believing in you, trusting you, receiving the full inheritance of children of God, partly which is our peace. I pray against him in Jesus' name and ask God as we seek you, as we agree with you, as we give our stuff to you, we, we're going to trust that you will be gracious and merciful to us. Lord, give us perseverance and endurance. Help us to know this isn't a quick fix, but this is a practice that you tell us. These are steps we can take to peace. May the Holy Spirit now go with us and remind us and empower us to walk in these steps so that we can that our gentleness will be evident to all because the God of peace is with us. I pray for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, just a couple things. Again, the Foster Love meetings right now, they are providing dinner. If you didn't know, you are more than welcome to come to that. We'd love to have you um, as we are caring for those kids who, who, and families who are supporting kids in foster care. And then I also want to remind you, tomorrow night, if you're a parent, we are having a parent seminar, Okay. And so uh, Brendan Young right here, he was on our panel as well a couple weeks ago. Um, I, I, I just don't, again, like I say, I don't know any parent who, who's got this down and couldn't use some help, and I think it's going to be a great night, okay? So that's tomorrow night, 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock right here uh, in the room uh, behind the, the sanctuary, all right? All right, God bless you guys. Thanks so much for being here. Love each other. Give some love to one another, and have a great night. <clears throat>